so in this video we are going to be looking at a beautiful concept the topic circle geometry okay so whenever you hear geometry the first thing that comes to mind is the concept of angles on shapes okay so it could be plane geometry which is um, angles formed on plane shapes and of course of course a circle is also a plane shape uh, in its case it's a plane shape with curved edges okay so now what we are going to be looking at in this lesson includes the parts of a circle just a quick review then we will look at two theorems of circle geometry and then we'll solve problems okay so so first of all we are going to be seeing a circle okay so first of all it is important to note that the line that's the curved edge of the circle is called the circumference of the circle okay all right that's the distance this line around the circle so the dot we have here is the center of the circle very important okay so after seeing the center of the circle there is something we call the chord of a circle which is just a straight line that touches any two points of the circumference so for instance this is a chord okay and then there's what we call the radius of the circle so the radius of the circle is a straight line that goes from the center of the circle to any part of the circumference okay so this is a radius we can represent radius with r letter r okay so um, after radius there's what we call a diameter so a diameter is also a chord but this time around is a special kind of chord that goes uh, directly through the center of the circle so is a chord that goes through the center of the circle so we call it the diameter that is to say it divides a circle into two equal parts okay so after all of this there's also other parts of a circle such as the segment of the circle okay so here is another circle all right so now if we divide this circle by a chord now so you are going to get what we call segment so this is a segment which is just a region of the circle bounded by an arc what is an arc an arc is just a fraction of the circumference so a region bounded by an arc and a chord is called a segment so the whole of this is a segment now this one is called a major segment while this one now is called a minor segment after segment there's also what we call the sector of a circle so the sector now is a region bounded by a or oh, sorry two radii so if I can produce two radii now, and so this region bounded by two radii now is called a sector of the circle. We have a minor sector and a major sector. These are the basic parts of a circle. You have a circumference, the center, a chord, a radius, a diameter, a segment, a sector, and then major segment and major sector and all of that okay so quickly let's go here are the theorems that we are going to be looking at in this section of this lesson okay so it says that the first one says that a straight line drawn from the center of a circle you know is always a perpendicular bisector to any chord of that circle so if i have a chord this was why we needed to learn the parts of the circle so if i have a chord say a b and then a line goes from the center of the circle remember the center of the circle is always represented with zero okay so a line runs from this center okay to the chord it will always be a perpendicular bisector of that circle so that means two things happens one is that it's going to divide this chord into two equal parts so assume that here this point is c so the implication is that ac will be equal to bc and that's not all 
the other part is that it will be perpendicular to that chord so that means this line is going to form angle 90 degrees with this particular chord here okay so that's the first theorem we are going to see examples on that over to this second theorem it says that equal chords of a circle are equidistant from the center so what does this mean you can actually state this in another way by saying that if you have two chords that are equidistant from the center of a circle then they must be equal so that's just what he's saying so if a b is of course it's a chord is equal to c d which is another chord the implication is that their distances from the center of the circle must be equal so this line here must be equal to this line so the what that means is that o e should be equal to o f okay so these are the very fundamental theorems of circle geometry that we are going to be starting with so let's look at examples look at this information it's always good to represent it diagrammatically okay so let's try to draw a diagram of what we are given So here is the diagram of the circle, just a very quick sketch. Okay, so here is the chord. We are told that the length of the chord is uh, 16. So we can start by representing only this part to be 8. Because if it is 16, this straight line will bisect the, the distance into 2. So we can call here 8. So why are we doing that? Because we have a triangle here. So, and I purposely used the radius to complete the triangle. You could have actually drawn the radius elsewhere, but that wouldn't help you. So, you just use it to complete this triangle here. And then, of course, you put in the radius here, which they said is 10 centimeter. Okay, and they are asking us to find the distance of the chord from the center. So, that is this point. We can call it X. Of course, now you can quickly make use of your Pythagoras theorem. So, and if you do that, you will see that the square of the radius will be equal to x squared plus this length here, which is 8. Alright, the square of it. So, of course, our radius is 10 and the square of 10 is 100, which is equal to x squared plus the square of 8 is 64. If you bring this 64 over here, you will have 100 minus 64, which will be equal to x squared. Therefore, our x squared alone is equal to 36. And so our x will be the square root of 36. Remember that square root is usually positive or negative. But since this is talking about distance, your distance can never be negative. Therefore, your x should be positive, what? 6 centimeters. And that is the solution for this first example. Okay, so in this case, we are told that there is a chord of a circle again that is 8 centimeter, and then we are asked to calculate the radius if the distance of the chord to the center is 3. Okay, so here again, we will draw our circle. So it says that the chord is uh, 8 centimeter. No point writing the whole length, just share it into two. You have 4, 4. The reason is because it is the triangle that will help us solve what we want to solve. You can call here the center. And so they told us that the distance from the center to the chord is 3. So here is 3. And we are to get the radius. So of course, that is easy to see. The radius is still the hypotenuse. So the square of it will be equal to the square. Here we have r squared is equal to 9 plus 16 which is equal to 25 and so our r alone will be the square root of 25 which so the radius of this circle is 5 okay so let's see another example okay in this case now we are to now get the length of the chord to represent the diagram for this okay so we are told to find the length of the chord now if the radius is 15 so here is 15 
and then the cord the distance of the cord from the center is 12 so we are to find the length of the cord so assume that the cord is a b so and then uh, maybe here is c so we need to find a c and since this is equal to here so if we find a c we multiply it by 2 and that will give us our the total a b we are looking for okay quickly let's go into it so our um, 15 is the radius so you square it equal to the sum of the squares of the other two so we have ac squared 15 okay so 15 squared is 225 and that's equal to 12 squared which is 144 plus ac squared so if you subtract 225 uh, if you do 225 minus 144 you will get 81 equal to ac squared so our ac alone will be the square root of 81 that's if we take the square to this side which is equal to 9 cm however that is not what we are looking for we are actually looking for the value of ab so which is equal to 2 times the value of ac and that's going to give us 18 centimeter as the length of the cord that is required okay so quickly let's look at the next one so look at this uh, nice example here so before we come back to this example four let's see example five example five says we should find the value of y if a b and a and c d sorry are equidistant from the center of the circle okay so here is the center of this circle o and then we are given that a, a b is 3 y and then y okay so that's the total of a b let's solve it so our a b is equal to 3 y plus this other small y which is from here to here and that's a total of 4 y while our c d is equal to from here to here is 4 and from here to here is 3 so that's a total of a 7 okay so we are asked to find the value of y if a b and c d are equidistant from the center and from the theorem that we saw the second theorem when two chords are equidistant from the center it only means that the two of them are equal or if two of them are equal it means that they are equidistant so it goes the both direction so the implication of this is that a a b is actually equal to c d so in that case my 4 y is equal to 7 and therefore my y alone will be 7 all over 4 okay so finally let's look at this other example strategic example and um, maybe i should do a single video on this just a very small video maybe one or two, two three minutes to take time to explain this so join me in the next video to find the solution to this problem all right so this is where we end it for this lesson kindly subscribe to our youtube channel we'll see you in our next video bye